First at four, a new $100 million lawsuit. A mother says she's at a loss for words over her son's beating in a care facility. Plus, here's Kim. Well, the snow and rain have come to an end, but behind that system is some high winds. We've got 46 mile per hour gusts out at the airport. We'll talk about some cold temperatures on the way coming up. And take a look behind me. All of this activity, we are inside an Amazon fulfillment center where a local seller is doing superstar caliber stuff as they try to make history as the luggage king. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, you. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew. The Detroit Police Department is aiming to reassure the public about security for this year's NFL draft after yesterday's mass shooting at the Super Bowl parade in Kansas City. Chief James White was quick to point out that yesterday's parade was a local event not connected directly to the NFL. He spoke to reporters just a short time ago at the city's state-of-the-art real-time crime center. Now, Chief White says Detroit has been preparing for the draft for two years. He says solid plans are in place and he does not foresee many changes to Detroit's security operations. He cited partnerships with state, local and federal agencies and listed how deep the operation will go. We've got uh, our liaisons that are in place, everything from our K-9 units uh, to our air operations. There are things that you will not see. I mean, you will not, you will not know where our helicopters are. You will not know uh, uh, where our undercover operation, operators are. You know, frankly, our undercover operators will be in jerseys and in the crowd. Uh, and they'll be moving and cheering like everyone else, but they'll also be reporting information to us that we need to know. The NFL draft comes to downtown Detroit in just a few months. It runs from April 25th to the 27th. And families across the country are tracking the story of that parade shooting in Kansas City. We're starting to get some answers as to why it happened. So let's get to Devin Skillian in the newsroom with the very latest for us today. Devin. Christy, we do know a bit more than we did 24 hours ago. Sadly, we've learned the number of those injured has doubled since what we knew at this time yesterday. We're also learning more about the woman who died and what may have sparked those terrifying moments for so many people. As we look at video of yesterday's chaos, police say it looks like some kind of dispute broke out. Several people getting into an argument and that spiraled into the mass shooting. Three people have been detained, including two juveniles. Firearms were recovered, but police are calling for witnesses, uh, anybody with cell phone footage, hoping that more uh, people can come forward to help them put all the pieces together. It is still a very active investigation, but 22 people injured, half of them under the age of 16. Shooting outside Kansas City's Union Station happened just as the Super Bowl parade was ending with 800 police officers in that area. Today, one reporter asked the Kansas City mayor what many people are thinking. Listen to this. Here's the thing. We have a plan for a St. Patrick's Day parade in Kansas City. We have parades all the time. I don't think they'll end. Certainly, we recognize the public safety challenges at issue that relate to them. Yeah, so far, one death from the shooting. A Kansas City radio host, Lisa Lopez Galvin, had a show called Taste of Tejano. We're told she was very popular in Kansas City. It leaves behind two adult children. A local lawmaker says he won't let her death be in vain and is promising to fight for gun reform. We are told the mayor himself had to run for safety when the shots rang out. He was at the parade with his wife and mother. The police chief uh, says it is likely that a million people were attending the parade in Kansas City, and that this violence was caused, though, by just a handful. We'll have much more reaction, and of course, we'll continue to learn more as the investigation moves forward. Coming up, the latest at 5. Christy, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Devin. In more news tonight, a local mother is filing a $100 million lawsuit over the beating of her 10-year-old child. Take a look. Attorneys just released this video. They allege the child was beaten while being a resident at the Hawthorne Center that is currently operating out of the Walter P. Ruther Psychiatric Hospital in Westland. The child was admitted for mental and emotional issues last year, and the suit alleges that another 15-year-old female patient attacked the 10-year-old while five staff members encouraged the violence. For several seconds, she stomps and stomps and beats Princeton. She knocks his tooth up into his gum. Princeton has some brain damage behind this based on a brain imaging study. 
trusting the staff in this facility to take care of him, provide him with his needs because he's now under their care. And the fact that they were that negligent and responsible and did nothing to protect him, I, I, there's no words. And you can see Karen at the news conference. She is covering this story. The family is now asking why no one has been arrested and why the facility is still allowed to operate. Karen has covered other issues at Hawthorne before. She's going to continue our coverage on this story and much more tonight at 5 and 6. All right, a little bit earlier on today, around noon, a few of our cameras were showing the snow, but uh, this is a live look outside right now at Mount Clemens. Not a lot of snow on the ground there, but the winds are the current problem. So let's head on over to Kim Adams, standing by with the very latest for us. Hi, Kim. Hi, well, we have some high winds out there, no question about it. We've got 46 mile per hour wind gusts out at the airport, 41 in Pontiac, 43 in Ann Arbor. Again, these aren't the temperatures, these are the wind gusts, not sustained winds, but wind gusts. So it's going to be a little blustery as we head through the next several hours, even though temperatures are in the upper 30s. Definitely that wind is going to put a chill in the air as we will have falling temperatures later on tonight. But it is quiet on Exact Track 40 radar. So if you're headed home tonight or headed out and about, you'll be just fine. Tomorrow morning is going to be really cold, though. 25 degrees. Wind chills will be in the teens. And we only make it into the low 30s, even colder for Saturday. So I'll talk about your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Yeah, we're not used to that. All right, thanks <laughs> so much, Kim. We'll see you in a few minutes. Attorneys for James Crumbly are fighting to get his trial moved about a week after his wife was convicted. The father of the Oxford High School shooter does not want his trial to take place in the same courtroom where Jennifer Crumbly was found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter. He is facing the same charges for each student who died. Now, the motion argues that they won't be able to seat an impartial jury. A similar motion was rejected back in 2022, but that, of course, was before his wife's trial. A hearing is set to take that up next week. Well, police are now calling the shooting of that 15-year-old boy inside the Weston Hotel in Southfield a homicide. The 15-year-old named Tyler died last night after being shot in the head during an unsupervised sleepover at the hotel this weekend. Another 15-year-old is facing charges for carrying concealed weapons, but the investigation into where the guns came from and who actually pulled the trigger is still ongoing. Well, Michigan is offering something new when it comes to voting. It is another tool that could make waiting in lines on Election Day a thing of the past. Today, the Secretary of State briefed us on the mechanics of early in-person voting. It is happening for the first time ever in Michigan statewide starting this Saturday. You can visit an early voting site in your area. You'll put your ballot into a tabulator just like you would on Election Day. And then the votes are inserted into secure containers each night with the tallies added to the vote total on Election Night. Secretary of State Benson says her office will be working to support clerks during this historic change and has this message as well. Whatever option voters choose to cast their ballot, they should know that Michigan's elections are safe, secure, and that the results will be counted accurately. And you can read much more information online. Just go to the Secretary of State's website, search for early in-person voting. And remember, it starts this Saturday and it ends February 25th. And then Election Day is the 27th. All right, during this Black History Month, we are going to give an insider's look at how Amazon is helping to build black businesses. So today we're going to highlight a Southfield-based company that's a rising star thanks to a national program. Amazon invited us into its fulfillment plant in Pontiac to show us how it all works. And Paula is there for us live. Hey, Paula. Hi. First of all, I just want you to see this because this is really a rare live look inside a fulfillment center for Amazon, and it is fascinating. But the program we're talking about, very specific program, Amazon's Black Business Accelerator Program, a $150 million commitment from Amazon. You know what? You hear about these kinds of programs that try to level the playing field for minority entrepreneurs, but this is really what this looks like from the inside. People have been really on Amazon looking for us. But look on the faces of Stephen and Ashley Davis were priceless inside the Amazonian size machinery in Pontiac, former site of the Silver Dome. Today, a touchdown for this husband and wife team, seeing for the very first time the very machinery that is fueling their success. Amazon is keeping our overhead down. As small black business innovators and owners from Southfield, they are rising stars. As Stephen shoots to be a suitcase king.
take off luggage, his line of luggage and travel accessories, come from his own pain points in traveling and trying to save money. The flight was $40, but the baggage fees was $100. And I was just like, that makes absolutely no sense. So what makes this different? The right size luggage that compacts to become a personal item that can actually fit beneath the seat of an airplane, thereby saving customers on painful carry-on fees. And I was just like, maybe if you take the wheels off, it probably would fit. Therefore, they don't charge you to carry your suitcase. So you, you save him money every time you fly. To be honest, he mentioned it and I was like, oh, okay. Whatever you say. <laughs> and so, um, and then all of a sudden, 500 boxes showed up at my house and they were in the living room. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, we're doing this. In two years, takeoff luggage has skyrocketed and it didn't hurt that it was one of Oprah's favorite things last fall. The side hustle has become a full-time gig. Mom-in-law has joined the team, and this family affair is showing the next generation what it means to be a stakeholder in the American dream. Proud, you know, beyond proud. Um, just to see your kids um, doing something on, on such a big level, a big platform. The Amazon piece is mammoth because of what they are doing to help small black-owned businesses, well, take off. Black-owned businesses offer uh, a variety of products for customers in Amazon stores, empowering them to shop with purpose and to support local black communities. So this is really important for us to give you know, those black sellers a platform to reach our millions of customers across the globe. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. It's exciting to have a, to actually have, to see a vision come into reality. And get this, takeoff luggage is projected to do as much as Five million dollars worth of units this year. I, Chrissy, my favorite part of the story was Dad telling me his daughter had career day, came to him with a logo shirt on and said, look, Dad, I'm you. I'm an entrepreneur. That is perfect, Paula. I love it. Thanks so much. What a that. great story. I absolutely do. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that will be inspired by this story as well. Thanks so much, Paula.